Hi, I'm Hari here, and boy do I love to read. From Beakers, A New Approach, to Question the Beaker, I just can't get enough of the stuff. But sadly, for the first 15 years of New Dwarf City, any dwarves that felt the same way about reading as I do had nowhere to do it. That's why we had to dig out this space, build all these bookshelves, and create the Library of Thieves. Because of course we would have to steal our books. With the farm plots occupied by plump helmet spawn that was necessary for our very survival, and the rope reed stocks around the river and pond looking quite sparse, a handful of choirs produced per year wasn't going to cut it. I had a hundred potential bookworms on my hands, and I wanted to give them the books they deserved. Which meant taking them away from those who didn't deserve them, like the elves at the forest retreat of Controlled Snow, and the goblins at the Dark Goblin Fortress of Lost Doomed. By stealing books one or two at a time from our neighbors, we slowly managed to build up our collection, at the cost of creating enemies out of the elves and giving the goblins extra reasons to come attack us. It was actually when the goblins came to attack us that I finally decided to stop my neighbor robbing ways. Not because of anything they did, or because I had a moral epiphany or something. No, I decided to stop robbing my neighbors because it became clear to me that I should instead be robbing all these towers littered around the landscape that were bursting at the seams with books. Whisper's Fancy, Snuggle Bushes, and Lengthwind had more than enough books to entertain my dwarves between them. But before any of my squads could be sent out book hunting, we first had to deal with the goblins that were threatening to kill us all. The fight was tense, and felt like it could go either way for a while, but we did end up on the winning side, though we lost six dwarves and had another six or so taken to the hospital. But with the siege broken, the book hunting blockade was out of our way, and we could get back to our robbing ways. After reworking the squads so that at least one squad was made up of healthy people, survivors set off to the Kobold Tower of Whisper's Fancy to steal some books. I'll skip past all the scrolls, tomes, and codices they brought back that detailed the local geography, history, and architecture of Whisper's Fancy and its surroundings, because who needs all that? And instead bring your attention to The Human Understood, a 27-page vicious essay about necromancers and great beasts and other cool stuff. We needed all the books to fill out our library, but as long as we were occasionally stealing cool books to put in between all the bookshelf fillers, I felt like the mission would be a success. Next up, we had the Goblin Tower of Snugglebushes. From Snugglebushes, which we returned to another two times before its book stocks were depleted, we picked up what felt like a million books that were either about a place, or were by a necromancer writing about the experience of writing one of their past books. They would make great bookshelf fillers. The one piece of writing that did manage to stand out from the crowd was a scroll made of shark called The Secret Might Help, which contained the story of a necromancer learning the secrets of life and death from another necromancer. I felt like it would be quite a hit in our library, especially if it was read next to a sterling silver slab with the secrets of life and death on it in the back corner. Now that's what I call a reading nook. The third and final tower we targeted was the dwarven, oops, Tower of Lengthwind. If I could have simply asked for their books, I would have though I was in too much of a rush to demand a tribute and have that whole back and forth. From them we took a variety of works. An essay about a necromancer moving into the tower, yes please. A codex that detailed a dwarf necromancer's failed attempt to corrupt a dwarf, perfect for bedtime stories. And two short stories, Opera Marines and Nothing More, and the appealingly titled Maggot, which despite the very specific names were actually about nothing in particular. I wish we had more. With our neighbors and the three closest and most prominent artifact hoarding towers stripped of their books, I looked around the library and was pleased with what I saw. Scholars discussing the moon and the tides, children playing, and Bemble reading The Secret Might Help only a couple meters away from a slab that might contain the very secret he was reading about. It was the ideal library, and I was happy with what I had accomplished. As long as none of those beak dogs we had picked up on our raids made their way down to the library with their weird pink bodies. That really ruined the vibes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.